Hello again, I am Mahima Bhardwaj from Bioinformatica. In this video, we will learn about PAM matrices. Let's get started. I assume that you have watched the video on sequence comparisons where gap penalties were discussed and video on basics of scoring matrices. If you haven't watched them yet, you can get the link in the description box below. Let's start with PAM matrices. PAM stands for Point Accepted Mutation, which was first developed by Margaret Dehoff. The question is, what is PAM matrices? A PAM matrix is a matrix where each column and row represents one of the 20 standard amino acids. PAM matrices are regularly used as substitution matrices to score sequence alignment for proteins. What are accepted point mutations? An accepted point mutation in protein is a replacement of one amino acid by another accepted by natural selection. It must be accepted by natural selection. To be accepted, the new amino acid usually must function in a way similar way to the old one. Chemical and physical similarities are found between amino acids that are observed to interchange frequently. Now this assumption is reasonable because this likelihood should depend on the product of frequencies of occurrence of two amino acids and on their chemical and physical similarities. The mutation data were accumulated from the phylogenetic trees and from a few pairs of related sequences. If we see a simplified phylogenetic tree, here four observed proteins are shown at the top. This is first one, second one, third and this is fourth protein. Infrared ancestors are shown at the nodes. These are infrared ancestors. An amino acid exchange are indicated on along the branches. These are amino acid exchange. Here we clearly see that A changes to D and A changes to C. But C and D do not directly interchange. If we had compared the observed sequences directly, we would have inferred the change of C and D also. For these, we have treated the changes statistically, distributing them among all observed alternatives. This matrix is of accepted point mutations derived from the tree we have discussed right now. In the matrix of accepted point mutation, we put one if the mutation is observed like here we can see mutation between a and c so in this column we have put one it is assumed that the likelihood of amino acid a replacing c is the same as that of c replacing a hence here a replacing c is also one and C replacing A is also 1. So, 1 is entered in a box of CA as well as AC. Mutability of amino acids The probability that each amino acid will change in a given small evolutionary interval is called as relative mutability. For calculating relative mutabilities of amino acids, we simply count the number of times that each amino acid has changed in an interval and the number of times that it has occurred in the sequences and thus has been subject to mutation. We can say that relative mutability of amino acid is proportional to the ratio of changes to occurrence. It is proportional to which ratio? It is proportional to the ratio of changes to occurrence. So let's take an example to have a clear picture about relative mutability. Here we see aligned sequences ADA and ADB. 
Okay, amino acids are A, B, and D. And changes observed are one in case of A, that is here. One in case of B, that's also here. One in case of B, and zero in case of D, because zero uh, D is not seen changed. Frequency of occurrence in total composition. For A it is 3, we can count it 1, 2 and 3. For B it is 1 and for D it is 2. So the relative mutability as we discussed it is proportional to the ratio of changes to occurrence. So here changes for A is 1 and occurrence is 3. So 1 by 3 it becomes 0.33. For B it becomes 1 and for D it is 0. In calculating relate mutabilities from many trees the information from sequences of different lengths and evolutionary distances is combined let's see the relative mutability of amino acids here we can clearly see relative mutability of aspargine and serine is higher that means aspargine and serine are most mutable whereas Cysteine and tryptophan are least mutable. The important thing to note here is al alanine is normalized to a value of 100. Moving towards mutation probability matrix. An element of this matrix Mij gives the probability that the amino acid in column J will be replaced by the amino acid in row I after a given evolutionary interval. In this case, it is PAM1. So, for filling the matrix, for non-diagonal values of matrix, we have the formula Mij would be equal to lambda Mj Aij divided by summation of Aij. Here, Aij stands for an element of the accepted point mutation matrix. And lambda is the proportionality constant. And Mj is the mutability of the jth amino acid that we discussed earlier and for diagonal values of matrix we have the formula mjj is equal to 1 minus lambda mj let us consider a typical column that is for alanine the sum of all elements must be 1 the probability of observing a change in a site containing alanine is proportional to the mutability of alanine the same proportionality constant lambda holds for all columns. The apparent evolutionary change depends upon the choice of lambda. Here the change chosen is of one mutation and because of no superimposed changes, the, this is also represented as PAM1 of change. If lambda had been four times as large, the initial matrix would have been represented as PAM4. What does mutation probability matrix provide us? It provides the information with which to simulate any amount of evolutionary change in an unlimited number of proteins. So to determine the fate of the first amino acid, here it is alanine, a uniform distributed random number between 0 and 1 is obtained. The first column of the mutation probability matrix gives the relative probability of each possible event that may befall alanine if the random number falls between 0 to 0.9867 and 0.9868 it is replaced with arginine because here we see 1 so 0.9867 to 0.9868 it would be replaced with arginine and if uh, the value would be uh, 9867 and replaced value would be 9867 then it won't be replaced it would fill same amino acid that would be alanine and so forth similarly a random number is produced for each amino acid in the sequence and action is taken as dictated by the corresponding column of the matrix the PAM1 matrix can be multiplied by itself n times to yield a matrix that predicts the amino acid replacements 
to be found after n pams of evolutionary change in a sequence of average composition. So here pam one would be multiplied by two fifty times to yield pam two fifty. Next we have got relatedness odd matrix. In this matrix, the values are calculated as R i j is equal to M i j by F i. The element M i j of the mutation probability matrix for each distance gives the probability that amino acid j will change to i in a related sequence in that interval. The normalized frequency F i gives the probability that i will occur in the second sequence by chance. The odds matrix is symmetrical. Each term gives the probability of replacement per occurrence of i per occurrence of j. The information in the 250 PAM odds matrix has proven very useful in detecting distant relationships between sequences. When one protein is compared with another position by position, one should multiply the odds for each position to calculate an odds for the whole protein. However, it is more convenient to add the logarithms of the matrix elements. So far, we have learned how to construct a PAM matrix. First, what we did was, for each amino acid type, the frequency by which amino acid is substituted by similar amino acid was calculated. Then, relative mutability was calculated. Then, we have calculated the mutation probability. These mutation probabilities are divided by frequency of occurrence of residues. Then log odds were calculated, calculate, calculation of log of these values. Then a matrix is completed. Hope you have utilized your time and learned something from this video. You can test yourself by attempting the quiz. The link is provided in the description below. Any queries would be answered in the comment section. Also don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Click on the bell icon to stay notified.